I've just returned from back-to-back -back Caribbean cruises on two very different ships, the massive 6,000-passenger Symphony of the Seas and the smaller 1,200-passenger Oceania Vista. And on both, despite their dramatic differences, I was amazed how many people were still getting the same five things wrong that I've seen on every Caribbean cruise I've done over the years. I want to warn you about them so you can definitely avoid and stop doing them. Welcome aboard, I'm Gary Bembridge, helping you to get Caribbean cruising right. First, most passengers I met on those two cruises had started by choosing the cruise line they wanted to cruise the Caribbean on and then choosing the itinerary. That, as you will see, is actually the wrong way round. You're much more likely to have a way better Caribbean cruise if you start by deciding which of the five different options is best for you and then choose the cruise line, especially if you return Caribbean cruiser. Now this is really important because each of the itineraries offer a very different experience and can make a huge difference in how much you enjoy yourself and what you see. So what are those five key itineraries? Well one just sails to the Bahamas and back. These tend to be very short cruises, you know, three or four nights, and are ideal for a quick party cruise or a getaway where the destination is less key. The next two are the most common ones usually lasting seven nights. The first is the Western Caribbean, which is what I actually did on both those cruises. They call on places like Cozumel and Costa Maya in Mexico, Roatan, Honduras, Belize, Jamaica, and the Cayman Islands. You know, they are pleasant enough ports, but they are less authentic and quite touristy in my view. The other though is the Eastern Caribbean. This, I feel, takes you to even more scenic places like St. Martin, the Dominican Republic, St. Kitts, St. Tiga, St. Thomas, St. Bart's, Haiti, and the Bahamas. These are more scenic, they have nicer beaches and much nicer sites in my personal view. Many cruise lines will actually alternate their ships between the western and the eastern itineraries, so you can actually do a back-to-back 14-night -back cruise and see both itineraries. The fourth itinerary is the Southern Caribbean cruise, and probably my favorite. They tend to be, though, a little bit longer, often 10 nights out of Florida, because they've got much further to sail. Now, some of these go to what's known as the ABC Islands, Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao. The most will go to places like Barbados, St. Lucia, Grenada, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, Dominica, and Martinique. Now, these tend to be even more exotic. They tend to be less busy in terms of cruise ships because they simply are further away for ships to travel. Now, the fifth itinerary hits a bucket list for many, and these are Caribbean cruises, which include a partial transit of the Panama Canal. They tend to be at least 10 nights and often call on Curacao or Willemstad. They do the partial transit through the Gatton Locks into the Gatton Lake, turn around and come back down again. They then visit some Western Caribbean ports like Rotan and Belize on their way back to Florida. It's a magnificent way of combining the Caribbean with getting a taste of the Panama Canal. I absolutely love doing those. Now I recommend trying different itineraries each time to see a more diverse side to the Caribbean, not just keep doing the same one over and over. This leads me on to a very important point about ports on the itinerary to look out for, and one that I must admit I've totally changed my mind about. I used to avoid itineraries that called on cruise line owned and operated islands and destinations, feeling that going there wasn't supporting local communities, which are not very affluent across the Caribbean, so I like the idea of getting my money into local communities. But I see this as a mistake after visiting more of these private islands. I do find them beautiful, they're well run, and there is lots to do. All the main cruise line corporations have them. Carnival Corporation, in fact, has several of them, Royal Caribbean a few, as do Norwegian Cruise Lines, Disney, MSC Cruises, they all have them. On my two recent cruises, I went to two of them. One of my favorites is Harvest Key Belize, the Norwegian group island. It's not a particularly large island, but has great beaches. I also went to Royal Caribbean's Labadee Resort in Haiti for the first time. This is a beautiful, stunning resort with different beaches, facilities, and even zip lines and slides. I've also been to Holland America's Half Moon Key, again a stunning island with lots to offer. One of the most famous of all is Royal Caribbean's Perfect Day at Coco Cay. Uh, they spent $250 million developing it. Another upside I found on them is they are safer, they're a more secure option with less need to worry about crime and safety, something 
that I will come to later as it's a growing issue. But before that, I recommended choosing which of the five of the itineraries is the first thing you should do. So what is the second? It's where I saw my recent cruises so many people tripped up on. And that is going on the wrong cruise line. The choice is huge as every line offers Caribbean cruises. So many though, including many I met on Simply the Seas, associate and book Caribbean cruises on these big resort style ships. They assumed to cruise the Caribbean required being packed on a vast ship with around 6,000 mostly younger adults, teens and kids. And they spoke about how they disliked being crammed on a ship with so many people. Of course, they didn't have to be because I explained to them that my second cruise after that one, I was going on a ship which had 20% of that number of guests with again couples and again mostly older. That was on Oceania Vista. Almost every cruise line, style of ship and size of ship sails in the Caribbean. I've cruised the Caribbean on those vast resort style ships, on premium ships like Celebrity Solstice, on American U Saturn Down, even Queen Mary II. I've been on luxury small ship Oceania Insignia with 600 guests, Vista with 1,200, and even on an ultra luxury Region 7 Seas with just 420 guests. You can do it in any style you want from adult only Viking or Virgin to kid friendly Disney. There is so much choice. You could even go as far as doing it with completely different nationalities or in a different language. So go on an Italian line like Costa, a German line like Aida or Mein Schiff, or even say the French line Ponant. In fact, you could also choose to have a British cruise experience versus a more North American one too, as you will hear, because this leads me neatly into the next mistake and misconception that I see. Many people I met assume that their only option to cruise the Caribbean is out of Florida. Now it is of course the North American state that's closest to the Caribbean and every day you have multiple ships cruising out of its three ports, Miami, Port Everglades in Fort Lauderdale and Port Canaveral. But that means also many negatives selling out of Florida. So for example, when I was in Miami to catch Oceana Vista, for example, there had been eight ships in on the Friday, nine ships on the Saturday, and there were going to be six ships in on the Sunday. So that means 15,000 to 20,000 people getting off and as many getting on. It's busy, it's crowded, it's manic. The hotels are all around there are crazy costly. Flights can be too. There are though many other options to cruise the Caribbean from other US ports. So when I checked, Carnival has 12 other ports at various times of the year. Norwegian and Royal Caribbean have nine alternatives. These include places like New York, Tampa, Galveston, and so on. Lots and lots of choices. Now the downside with those is unlike if you're sailing from Florida, you're probably gonna get some of the cruise line's older ships, not kind of the new glitzy ones. But often on the upside, that does mean lower fares. But there are way more options to cruise the Caribbean from too. You can sail to the Caribbean direct to and from Europe. I've sailed to the Caribbean twice out of the UK. Once it was on a repositioning with a Caribbean cruise at the end on Pino Cruises Britannia, and the other time on Cunard, I went all the way there and back from Southampton. You can also do a Caribbean cruise on European lines like UK's Pino Cruises, German Mind Shift and Aida, and Italian Costa as they move and base many of their ships there in the season, mostly out of Barbados. Increasingly, some more US focused lines are also now basing their ships right in the Caribbean in ports like Barbados, San Juan and St. Martin. These range from ultra luxury lines like Ritz Carlton and Silver Sea, small luxury lines like Windstar, premium lines like Virgin Voyages, but even mass resort lines like Royal Caribbean are basing ships right out of the Caribbean. There are so many more and growing options than relying just on those increasingly busy Florida ports. Now I do want to talk now about something that concerned me more than in fact all these other mistakes because I felt it very real on these trips and that is passengers falling into the trap of thinking that because the Caribbean is so busy and so popular that it's safe both on and off the ship. With many people on a ship, both crew and passengers, I always assume there by definition has to be some kind of bad eggs as it were amongst those. And I had a really vivid reminder of this when a crew member was arrested on Symphony of the Seas as I was boarding my Caribbean cruise. Now he had been caught on the cruise before, leaving hidden cameras in the bathroom of a cabin that was being shared by three women. Now while reported crime rates on ships do appear low, 
it does happen and sexual assault by the way is the most reported on ships sailing in and out of the United States which of course are mostly Caribbean cruisers. The next most reported is physical assault so fights. So again a reminder if you're going on a Caribbean cruise to be aware and not let your guard down totally especially if you're using that drinks package rather heavily. But also think about off ship safety in the Caribbean. While the Caribbean is so busy and maybe because of it it's important to know that many of the ports have crime issues. There is a lot of poverty across the islands and crime and unrest seems to be a growing issue. Now as I headed on these cruises several of the ports I was going to had received elevated travel advisory warnings from the US State Department. Those were for calls into Jamaica and Nassau for elevated crime levels and Labadee which is in Haiti for the civil unrest there. At various points many many other popular cruise islands are or have been flagged as risky places due to crime for travelers and of course cruise passengers. That includes Roatan which I also called to on this trip, St. Lucia, the US Virgin Islands, Antigua and St. Kitts all having warnings about crime at various points in time. It is essential when you're heading to the Caribbean to check the current advice and don't make the mistake of letting your guard down at all. This is key as personally I feel and especially on these cruises felt that the line didn't and don't do a good job at flagging the higher warnings nor give us passengers advice on staying safe and what to do in each port. For example the raised levels of advice were only small vague references buried in the daily program for the ports we called on. I think we all need to not let our guard down and get lulled into a sense of false security. On islands flagged as having elevated risk stick with the crowds, go on cruise line excursions, maybe even stay on board or only go into the enclosed port areas in islands with current travel advisory. So for me that's exactly what I did in Jamaica. I just stayed in that enclosed port area. On the upside in most ports because tourism is so important I am though seeing increased security around the ports and the main tourist spots which is good news. So recently on a cruise I saw in Dominica they've created a secure controlled area now around the port where the ships are docked. It's manned by uh, the police. I found a lot of on a lot of the beaches like in Barbados you know they've got tourist police keeping an eye on things constantly walking around the beach. So as well as checking the state or foreign office advice before I cruise I also use another website called whatsinport.com because they always advise about safety in the port, when it's a good idea to go on excursions, when it's fine to go self-exploring and other watchouts. Now I have more specific in-port watchouts and tips including around shopping, taxi ripoffs, touring ripoffs and safety and I cover those in this video starting with the biggest mistake that people make when they're in a Caribbean cruise port that you need to know about. See you over there.